I've been asked occasionally, how, how do we judge our success in the building at Weta? And uh, people have said, oh, it must be by the number of Oscars you've won, or maybe it is by the number of movies that you've worked in. And I've always viewed that the greatest judge of success of a company such as ours, which is an art company at the end of the day, it's a company that is making art for a living, is arguably the number of babies born to people that work with you <laughs> and the number of mortgages that those people have. Because those of you that do a creative career can appreciate that um, to actually find a place of comfort in the creative industries that give you the certainty that you can start a family and uh, and start and buy a house is very very difficult so i love the fact that uh, within our company over 80 people have ended up having babies and almost a very large number of our staff now own their own home and i think about where we started and how tiny the company was and how difficult it was all that for all those years for those people to ever imagine a life of stability but here you go, 25 years later, we're in a situation that many of our staff that have been with us since the beginning of the company have now managed to get some level of normality in their lives and are enjoying the fact that they can have some stability. Now, unfortunately, it is still a bit of a roller coaster what we do for a living because uh, of the madness of the film industry. But, um, we are very fortunate that even though we're in that tiny corner of the world, we continue to do what we love to do for a living. Has anyone here done any prosthetics? No? Oh, it's a wonderful thing to get into. You can get into it in a big way as a hobby. Yeah. Obviously, you've done your nose. Did you glue your own nose on? Yes, of course. It's challenging, eh? It is. Doing it into the mirror. I make good prosthetics. Great, yes, your hands are amazing. What have you made them in? Uh, silicon. Silicon. Did you uh, sculpt them? Yeah. Wow, incredible. <coughs> challenging, eh? I made it all, but I'm not finished. Okay, and I've got paper with your hands. They're beautiful. Are you exhausted? Your thumbs are getting sore? Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. better sculpting. Yes. Wonderful. Well, you're very fortunate because I don't think many of the dwarves could. <laughs> i tell you our problem with the hands on, um, and if you don't understand, please have someone translate because you may find this interesting. Okay. The challenge with the hands, we normally would make a hand in this shape, which is halfway between this and that, yeah? But the issue is that if we did it in this shape, we would have to have done a two-part mould, and you probably did a two-part mould. Yeah. Yeah. So if we had done a two-part mould, because of the crazy, crazy short time that we had to make the hands, we had to have the hands ready in under seven weeks. And we had to do a new pair. We had to have the ability to do a new pair every day. We couldn't actually do them like this, even though we knew that we needed to, because we needed the actors to stand naturally and be able to move their hands easy. But we ended up having to sculpt them like this so that we could get them out of a one part mold. So there would be no seam around them. Because if there was a seam, we would never have got them done in time. So um, it meant that all the actors had hands like this. So you will see in the movie sometimes that you see them walking yes. along. <laughs> Which is not very good. But that was a simple result of not having enough time. And uh, we knew 
that it would be a problem for them, but that was just a reality of, uh, of the situation that we were in. It was more important to get them actually done than um, do them as perfectly as we would have wanted to have. Very frustrating. We made them, uh, and we did the same with the dwarf feet. Because we did them in one part moulds, that meant that we couldn't <coughs> the dwarf hands and the hobbit feet hobbit. were all done in one part moulds. And the issue there is that because you've got a one part mould, when you take your hand out of a glove, you do this with your hand, and this distance almost becomes the same size as this. So you can extract it out of a hole, yeah? The problem, of course, is the core, the centerpiece that makes the silicon hand, is this shape, and ugh, there's no way it will come out. So you therefore have to do what's called a jigsaw core, where you actually split the core into 